Our scripture this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, and it is the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found out one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And in anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Here ends the reading of his holy word. So in our scripture for today, we find Jesus speaking with the disciples on the topic of forgiveness. And Peter comes to Jesus and asks him, how many times must I forgive someone when they sin against me? I read this week, uh, one author described Peter as the patron saint of all those who do not have a filter or that don't think before they speak. And I love that description of him because he is often found making bold declarations only to fail to see them through. But in this case, Peter had actually thought through what he wanted to say to Jesus. See, Peter says, I think we should forgive people seven times when they've sinned against us. Now, there is no doubt that Peter was trying to impress Jesus with this declaration of forgiving seven times. Because under Jewish law at the time, a person was required to forgive someone that sins against them three times. So Peter doubles that number and then throws one more in for good measure. But Jesus corrects him, telling him not seven times, but seven times 70. In some translations, the one we have this morning, it's translated to 77 times. But the point here is not that there is a number of times that we have to forgive people. What Jesus is trying to tell us and Peter is though the law may have once said there was a finite amount of times that you need to forgive someone when they sin against you. The new law that Christ is telling us is that we are to offer forgiveness to those who sin against us each and every time they do. Jesus then goes on to tell the parable of the unmerciful servant. He tells of a man that when his debts were canceled, by his master that he goes out then and, and looks for people that owe him money and uh, does not forgive them now the amazing part about this is that when the master did forgive him he was under no obligation to do so he did not have to give forgive that man's debt but he does so anyways 
And when the servant goes out and finds the man who owes him money and threatens to beat him within an inch of his life if he doesn't pay the much smaller sum, that word gets back to the master and he hears how the servant had been treating the other servants. How he had decided to show no mercy and no forgiveness to them. The master becomes angry and he has that man turned over to the jailers until he can pay his debts. And Jesus closes that parable by telling us that is how God will treat each and every one of us if we are unwilling to forgive our brothers and sisters. Now we find ourselves today living in a world where the idea of forgiveness has become synonymous with the word weakness. We are told by this world that we are to hold everyone to the debts that they owe us to the exact penny. And we are told that when someone wrongs us in some way, we are to hold that against that person forever. Oh, we can say that we forgive them, but we are told that though we may forgive, we should never forget the wrongs they have done against us. And brothers and sisters, I must ask you, if you are not willing to forgive someone and move past what they have done, then have you really offered them forgiveness at all? When we act in this way, it's kind of like we say this. You know, I know things have been rough between the two of us, but I made you a pie to make up for it. Here, you can have the pie. Oh, no, no, wait. Not the whole pie. Not a slice of the pie. I'm going to give it to you a crumb at a time for the rest of your life. That way I can keep an eye on you and make sure that you are worthy of this pie. Well, that is no gift at all when we offer forgiveness in the same way, a crumb at a time. Now, last week we talked about when we fight, how we should fight the way that Christ has instructed us to. And we also talked about how we should be making amends wherever there is a problem or a conflict that has arisen in our lives. But making amends isn't just about going to other people and asking for their forgiveness. It can also be when someone has come to you and asked for your forgiveness. And if you are withholding that forgiveness from them, then you are stopping the process of healing to begin between the two of you. And if you were holding up forgiveness from that person, you are stopping yourself from following the words that Christ has given to us. I know that it is not easy to forgive sometimes. I know that there are people that have wronged each and every one of you and myself as well. And I know that we struggle to find a way to forgive them sometimes. But I put my faith And the fact that Jesus Christ has forgiven me for all the sins that I have committed against him. And if he has called me to forgive others the way that he has forgiven me, then I must do my very best to forgive others. See, it is plain in our scripture for today, that is what God wants of us. It is not a forgiveness that we are called to give just three times, not 70 times, not even 70 times, seven times but given whenever it is asked for freely and without attachment to it. Now I know so far today it sounds as if we're getting, not getting anything out of it when we forgive someone. It feels as if we are called to do all the hard work in these situations. And truly we do find ourselves in a difficult situation to forgive and move on in spite of whatever has been done to us. But I want to tell you that there is power in forgiveness. There is a power that is gained when we forgive someone. And when we forgive them fully in the way that Christ has forgiven us, see, there is a freedom that is found in that forgiveness. There is an end to the constant thought and struggle and anger that we feel for that person whenever we do truly forgive them. Now, I want to tell you a story. See, there were two brothers, and when it came time that their father was passing away, the younger brother 
stole the inheritance from the older brother. And for 20 years, that younger brother ran away from his older brother, fearing what would happen whenever they would meet again. After all, he had stolen the inheritance of the older brother, and he was afraid to face those consequences. So he assumed that his older brother was still angry with him for all these years, so angry that he thought that he would be killed if he ever saw his older brother again. But finally a day came when the younger brother could run no more, and he went out to meet his older brother and to face those consequences, expecting that a great fight was coming his way. But instead, what he found was that the older brother ran to embrace him, to tell him that he loved him and that he had been forgiven for his sins against him. See, the older brother had a choice to make in those 20 years. He could have held on to the anger and the bitterness of losing his inheritance to the younger brother, or he could have chose to forgive him. And he did choose to forgive him and move forward in his life and be set free from those feelings of anger and hatred. Now, maybe this story sounds familiar to you. Maybe you were able to kind of figure it out yourselves as I was telling it to you. This is the story of Jacob and Esau. See, biblically, we find instances over and over again about forgiveness and its power. Not just in the New Testament, where Jesus is calling us to forgive, but we see how forgiveness in the Old Testament and that power can heal things and move forward in people's lives. We see it in the instance of Jacob and Esau, and we see it in the instance of Joseph and his brothers. We see that when Joseph was betrayed by his brothers and sold into slavery, one day his brothers have to come to him and beg him for food. Now they did not know that they were begging Joseph for food, but Joseph again shows us the power of forgiveness, forgiving his brothers, feeding them, and taking care of them, and his father, and how the nation of Israel was able to prosper throughout their time in Egypt while Joseph was alive. See, that all starts because Joseph was willing to forgive his brothers. So where do you find yourself today? Are you harboring anger against someone in your life? Is there something that they've done against you that you've never been able to let go of? Well, brothers and sisters, I must ask you, how would your life look if you were willing to let go of that anger today? How much better would you be able to serve the Lord if you were willing to offer forgiveness to those people the way that Christ has freely offered forgiveness to you? Now, I know that this teaching of forgiveness of others is not always easy to put into practice. And I know that there are times and things that have happened and we've struggled with them for so long that we don't even know how to begin to give up that anchor that's been weighing us down. And what I would tell you this, following the path of Christ, the path of Christ has never been an easy thing and it is not promised that it is an easy thing. He told us that from the very beginning of his ministry to follow him has a cost. And there will be times that we struggle to do so. But he has also told us this, that following that path, we can be forgiven and have eternal life with him. So when we find ourselves today in this life struggling to forgive others, a good place for us to start is to pray about it. To pray to the Lord to help us to find the strength to forgive those that have wronged us. A strength to forgive them fully. Not to offer them bits and pieces of forgiveness at a time, but forgiveness as a whole. See, we need to do this so that we can continue our work here on earth in furthering the kingdom of heaven. So that we can show Christ that we understand his words when he calls us to forgive those as he has forgiven us. Finally, I will leave you with this idea. Again, I know that we have been wronged by people in this world. I know that at times we really, 
really struggled to offer them that forgiveness. But I will remind you of Jesus' words as he hung on the cross. Because though people may have wronged you and people have wronged me, no one's ever crucified me. But as Christ was hanging on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, even in that moment of pain, Christ was willing to forgive those that were tormenting him. So my challenge for you this week is this. Is there someone in your life that you need to forgive? Do it this week and be free of those feelings of anger so that you can further the kingdom of heaven. Amen.